so good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, there's um, a lot of folks uh, who are here today, but then there's a lot of folks behind the scenes as well who are part of making uh, success of, of a program that's really uh, designed to help the most marginalized in our community. So it's with um, great pleasure uh, that I'm here this morning. My name is Jeff Nevin. I'm the executive director at Indwell. And uh, yes, I do have an eye injury from a ball hockey. Thank you, Bernadette. Um, <coughs> that's right. Ironically, it was one of the staff here who got me with the elbow. <coughs> Um, I don't see him today. I don't know what that, <laughs> what that means. <laughs> um, we're just delighted. Uh, we're talking this morning about Parkdale Landing, which is just one major city block uh, down the street. Uh, and we're talking um, about a new and innovative approach uh, to uh, ending homelessness and providing mental health uh, care in our community. Um, it's also a pleasure of mine to introduce a longtime friend, uh, Ted McMeekin. And uh, Ted, we go a long way back, uh, sure. just sharing that uh, it was about a decade ago um, already, maybe even a little more, that uh, I did my Master of Social Work placement in uh, Ted's office. And uh, uh, it's always great when people lean in and uh, invest in you and uh, Ted's done that in me and um, it's wonderful that we've had a, uh, a journey for the last decade uh, we were I think we were acquaintances uh, before that but I think we're friends since that if that's fair to say and uh, it's it's fantastic when there's moments like this when we can celebrate uh, some really uh, some really excellent work. And uh, so it's my pleasure to, to introduce uh, to MPP Ted McMeekin this morning. Well, thanks very much. Uh, Jeff was the best student we ever had in the office. He's, uh, he's, and he's, he's gone on to some other, other things, you know. He's uh, um, taking all that, uh, that uh, idealism that uh, so characterized his uh, work with us and uh, has built uh, it here with a whole lot of support from a whole lot of people. So, uh, uh, Jeff, we're incredibly proud of the work at uh, Indwell and the work that you and Graham and the whole team does here. Thank you very much. Uh, I get all the time in the world for, uh, I really do, you know this, for Indwell and the work that you do. Um, you know, you've been uh, welcoming people with uh, mental health challenges and addiction challenges, uh, uh, not the uh, minister the, uh, the the catchment group that a lot of people line up to serve right and uh, they do it with distinction here and uh, and with a set of values that uh, that it has uh, is filled with integrity and uh, the, you know we've we've had some walks together and some talks together and some some successes together and some failures too we, we keep we keep working to turn the the uh, scars into stars, as some somebody somebody used to say. In any event, um, you didn't come here to hear me me speak. You uh, you, you uh, uh, came here to hear what the good minister has to say. And uh, you know, I say the good minister because that's exactly uh, how you need to describe Dr. Jasek. She is uh, she is something else. I tell you, you know, little did she know that uh, that. Um, Dr. Hoskins was going to take a walk north to uh, solve the riddle of National Pharmacare, which I'm sure he'll be successful at. But uh, she uh, was uh, at the ready to come in, step in as Minister of Health. Uh, she uh, was uh, a public, public health official in Peel, I believe, right? York. York, York region. And uh, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, <Old> Ted. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, so, uh, but uh, you know, she's been forged in a lot of. Uh, you know, it's in, uh, good to say this in Hamilton. We get forged here in a lot of fires that strengthen us, right? And uh, she's been strengthened for the journey, and uh, and uh, has been a relentless advocate uh, on the uh, social justice poverty side, and. Uh, 
I, I just can't say enough good things about you, Minister. I, I just love you to bits, and you're just doing a terrific job. And uh, uh, when I when people ask me, uh, you know, how do you get it done? I, I say it's good because a good folk like you are there every day in the trenches, working hard uh, to make a difference. My mom used to say there are two kinds of people in the world, those that make a noise and those that make a difference. I want to introduce you to a champion difference maker, the right honor, the Honorable Helena Jasic. <laughs> well, thank you so very much, Ted, for that kind introduction. And it's great to be here in the Hamilton area. Again, I've spent quite some time uh, over the last three and a half, almost four years now, uh, and uh, it's great to be back. I do want to uh, obviously start off by acknowledging that Hamilton is located on the traditional territory of indigenous peoples dating back countless generations, and I want to show my respect for their contributions and recognize the role of treaty making in what is now Ontario. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I think it's the second time we've met now. Uh, I've learned quite a bit about what you do here at Inwell, and I am so impressed. Uh, this is exactly what we need uh, across the province, and uh, you have been forging ahead here at Inwell with a, a great model of care. And uh, Janine, uh, obviously, uh, this particular Lynn, and it's Hamilton, Niagara, Haldeman, Brandt. I know we've met before because literally in the first week I became the Minister of Health, I made sure I uh, came to Hamilton and uh, to Brantford. And uh, your Lynn is showing real leadership in respect to mental health issues. And uh, uh, I was, again, very <coughs> impressed. Uh, you know, a minister always gets this big binder of stuff. And looking through the kind of partnerships that you forged here is, is just excellent. And uh, as I say, really, uh, we need to make sure other Lynns in the province follow the model that here is, uh, is existing here. Um, Ted, well, what can we say about Ted? Uh, he uh, is such a champion for this particular community. We hear about it all the time, whether it's in caucus, uh, just uh, chats. Um, Ted's uh, obviously a great person to chat with. Uh, he was my predecessor as Minister of Community and Social Services and gave me some very good advice when I came into that portfolio. And uh, I can tell you that he speaks up for the needs of this community on, on a regular basis. Uh, Ted uh, referred to the fact that uh, I was a medical officer of health, so I'm particularly clear on the social determinants of health. As you probably know, this is the basis for public health practice. In other words, uh, it's not just about health care, about medications and all that sort of mechanics of, uh, of health care, which is important, but it's also about people's income, their education, uh, their sense of social inclusion. All these pieces make for a healthy life and obviously an excellent quality of life. And so uh, we have our basic income pilot. I just have to say something about that because my heart's still a little bit in MCSS. <laughs> um, very excited about the basic income pilot that is happening now here. Um, pretty much fully enrolled, I believe, in the greater Hamilton area. And uh, we're going to learn so much about uh, who uh, does actually benefit from a basic income, what kind of uh, level of income that is. Uh, we learned all sorts of interesting things just in trying to get people to sign up. Uh, a lot of people over the age of 65 who actually are ineligible for the project wanted to sign up. So I think this really tells us about how seniors are finding that affordability issue very uh, prevalent in their lives because this was something that uh, we hadn't expected at all and so we're going to continue to monitor that uh, it's obviously going to take a number of years but the issue of safe affordable housing is absolutely crucial for everybody everybody needs a room of their own and uh, the most marginalized that's basically the first requirement is a roof over your head and a room of your own. So it really is a pleasure to be here today to witness the incredible work that you're doing to support a stronger, healthier community here in Hamilton. 
And I also want to take a moment to recognize the many people here today who are themselves facing mental illness or addiction or supporting someone who is. Because today's announcement is all about you and building an Ontario where you can always access the care that you need. There is no health without mental health and there is no health care without mental health care. Everyone in Ontario should have access to the mental health care they need when and where they need it. And of course so many do. Each year, some two million people in Ontario go to a family doctor or health clinic to ask for help with mental illness like depression or anxiety or to seek help with addiction. I was in uh, clinical practice for, for many years and uh, you know, you're fresh out of medical school and you know how to fix fractures and, um, and you recognize congestive heart failure and, you, and people would come into my office and I knew they were suffering from some sort of anxiety or depression. And honestly, I felt totally unable to, to help. I, I, I kept thinking, well, I didn't go into psychology, but underlying usually the sore throat, there was obviously much more. And people, you know, want to share. They want to share with their doctor. And I know how many times family physicians, I think still, even in this day and age, it's a long time since I graduated, um, feel unclear how to proceed. And so, that is something that we have to ensure um, is something that we take care of so that our health professionals also know where people can get help. So uh, the fact is that nearly a third of us will experience a mental health or addictions challenge at some point in our lives. We do have a good system and of course it's uh, due to uh, many outstanding community organizations such as Indwell where we are here and I've heard Wayside House and Linwood Charlton Center which is I guess a children and youth agency are also uh, here in the community doing great work. But we do know that too many people are struggling to navigate the system to find the care they need. So part of what I'm here to talk about today is ensuring there is no wrong door to accessing mental health care. It's making sure that no matter where a patient goes first, a school, a family doctor, a local community mental health organization, there will be a path to the care that they need. I was on the select committee uh, for mental health and addictions uh, in, uh, it was 2009-2010. It was a non-partisan committee of the legislature, probably the best thing that I've done in the 10 years that uh, I was there because obviously you forge uh, alliances across uh, party lines when you're all trying to tackle an issue. And we put forward a number of recommendations, many of which our government has been working towards. Uh, we called our document Navigating the Journey to Wellness because that issue of every door being the right door and knowing how you can access service is absolutely crucial and I think what we've announced in our 2018 budget is very much in keeping with that, it's uh, the question of better access uh, that is absolutely cr uh, critical. And so we as a group, the nine of us who are on that committee, and many of our colleagues are still around who are on that committee, um, we realized that stigma was a huge issue. And this is, you know, seven, eight years ago. And the issue, I guess, is, okay, I think that everyone now has come to that realization um, that Mental health issues are common, we need to deal with them as early as possible, uh, but the issue of stigma has now been lessened, uh, but where are the services? And we just have been, we've been putting incrementally here and there, but now we really need to transform um, the whole system. And so that's why I'm really pleased to talk about the single biggest investment in mental health and addictions care in Canadian history uh, that our government is making and that uh, we made through the 2018 budget. We, we based our plan going forward very much on the advice of the Ministry's Mental Health and Addictions Leadership Advisory Council, chaired by Susan Piggott, uh, who did just an excellent job. Obviously, people with lived experience were on that, uh, uh, that council, and we took their advice, and uh, this is how we're going to be opening doors to mental health care in communities across Ontario, including, of course, here in Hamilton. We're committing $2.1 billion in new funding 
for programs that will reshape the mental health care system and provide more access points to care. But money alone is not enough, and this is why the plan we announced in last week's budget includes ensuring that whether the support is in public schools, colleges, universities, family doctors, hospitals, uh, from urban centers to remote First Nations communities, we want to make sure that all the pieces work together. Uh, we uh, talk a lot uh, about our patients first approach, the patient centered approach. It's not about individual institutions, important as they are, but it's about ensuring that it's the right place uh, for the person at that particular time, and that if things change, that there is a seamless uh, navigation into whatever is needed for that person next. And so, in particular, and, uh, based on the wonderful work that is uh, going on here at Indwell, we will be building 2,475 new supportive housing spaces for those who need additional care and support where they live. Starting with 57 new units scheduled to open later this year through Indwell Community Housing's Parkdale Landing location. And I understand that the fundraising has gone incredibly well. Again, partnerships with community foundation involvement and uh, the municipality and everyone coming together. So this is a great, great model. We also plan to provide publicly funded therapy for up to 350,000 more people with mild to moderate anxiety or depression. This is structured psychotherapy. So support outstanding community organizations such as your local Canadian Mental Health Association with a much needed funding increase. Some of these organizations have not had base funding increases for many years, so they've been stretched to provide the services with the growing clientele and obviously with inflationary pressures as well. We are going to be creating thousands of new spaces for community services for children and youth through organizations like the Linwood Charlton Center here in Hamilton. It also means that every high school in Hamilton will have access to an additional mental health worker and there will be more mental health services on campuses such as Mohawk College, McMaster University. So your son or daughter can get the help they need if they're struggling with anxiety, which we're often seeing uh, as people leave home and uh, go to university. Also, a time when major psychoses can become evident, schizophrenic breaks and so on. So we need the help right then and there as fast as possible uh, in these situations. And once the system is fully set up, there will be a new helpline, basically a provincial line, that will offer crisis counseling and referrals 24 hours a day, seven days a week. People should not have to go to an emergency department. They should be able to find out where they should go, where it's most appropriate for their particular issue. So we are building an Ontario where no one is left behind. We know that now is not the time to pull back or make any cuts to the services people need. It is the time for more care. This announcement is a crucial part of our plan for a fairer, better Ontario. And this historic commitment builds on our work to make prescription drugs free for half the population, including more than 95,000 seniors here in Hamilton. As I referenced, the learning from the basic income uh, pilot was that uh, there's an affordability issue for seniors, which I think somehow we weren't as clear on as we should have been. And so this has led uh, to the expansion of what we call OHIP Plus, so there'll be no copay and no deductible for prescription drugs uh, across the province. We're also going to, be going to be doubling the number of at-home personal support, nursing and therapy visits for, for people who need care in their home in Hamilton and across the province. So this is beefing up home care and trying a few new models of home care, again, to ensure people can stay where they want to be, which is at home, as long as possible. But we do know that inevitably there may be a need for more long-term care, the institutional kind of setting that is most appropriate uh, for some people. And so we will be creating 30,000 new long-term care beds over the next decade for our family members who can no longer be cared for at home, starting with, uh, I made the announcement not too long ago, I think it was that first week, uh, 128 new long-term care beds right in downtown uh, Hamilton.
so this is a long-term plan that will relieve pressure on our hospitals and ensure that people are getting the best care possible in the most appropriate settings so that their smaller health concerns are not escalating to any sort of a crisis level that requires hospitalization. And we believe that with these kinds of investments, we're building a fairer, healthier, and stronger Ontario. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And uh, I think it's worth another round of applause for 57 new uh, <laughs> units of housing. We thought, we thought briefly about having this uh, announcement in the building that's currently under construction. While it is already really well insulated, it's the first uh, passive house uh, multi-residential building in Hamilton. Um, it doesn't have heat on yet. So, you know, that would be a bit of a challenge. So, uh, but if any of you are interested, uh, um, the next street heading that way is Melvin. And if you just take it down one major city block, you'll see the building heading, uh, heading east. Yep, at, at Parkdale and Melvin, you'll find the building that we're talking about. Uh, it's called Parkdale Landing. So we're really, ex yeah, we're really excited about that. Um, uh, as the minister said, uh, there's been many people that along this journey that have helped us to get here. So starting with um, uh, Terry Cooks here this morning from the, the Hamilton Community Foundation that uh, provided us a, a mortgage to be able to buy the property. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and uh, City of Hamilton helped us, is helping us cover the, uh, the carrying costs on that until we get open and operating. Um, we've also raised, uh, this program we're talking about this morning is phase one of two phases. So phase two um, will be a 50 unit apartment building uh, to help folks who are coming into uh, a program with high supports to be able to have a space to go towards uh, more independent uh, housing with still some, some basic supports. Um, and that project together, uh, the community has contributed uh, now over five million in private donations. Uh, and that's from individuals and corporations uh, in, in our neighborhood. So I think that's worth a, a clap as well. Um, we're deeply appreciative as well for the IAH, Investment in Affordable Housing Dollars, that uh, uh, Ted, you were there when those were announced. Uh, uh, as well that are going in to make that, that project possible. Um, it's also uh, my privilege to introduce to you um, uh, Janine Vanden Heuvel, um, uh, who is the board chair of our local LIN. So, Janine. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so for those of you who haven't met me yet, my name is Janine Vanden Heuvel and I have the privilege um, to be the very grateful chair of the local LIM. Um, I'm here on behalf of the board of directors of the Hamilton Niagara Haldeman Brandt Local Health Integration Network. We affectionately call ourselves the H&HB LIM. Um, I'd like to thank our Minister of Health and Long-Term Care for, and her staff for organizing this event here today. I want to acknowledge MPP McMeekin and offer my thanks uh, for the opportunity pr to provide remarks. I really am proud to be here. Um, I'm very proud to have Indwell in our Lynn and I would be exceptionally jealous of any other Lynn that had you. So <laughs> I'm very pleased to be here. Um, thanks to Strathern Suites for hosting us today along with members of the media. Thank you for coming today. Um, this is an important event. I'm happy that you're here to learn more. A few years ago, the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care released a comprehensive strategy on mental health and addictions. It was called Open Minds, Healthy Minds. And at the core of that document was the recognition that more needed to be done for those living with mental Ill illness and addictions. Since Open Minds, Healthy Minds was released, the need for mental health and addiction services has grown. For our Lynn, Addressing this growing need is one of our top priorities, and today's announcement aligns with the support um, that other areas in our Lynn are doing to support this. Um, as I struck out on my day today, there was a really wonderful CBC interview going on with the um, Hamilton police about their crisis response, and I'm very pleased that we're starting to see all of those dis different pieces come together and start to wrap care around some of um, our most vulnerable people. I'd like to thank the minister and her ministry for his support of mental health and addictions and support of housing investments. It's so important. Today's news is most certainly welcome for the people of Hamilton and others across our Lynn. 
We're at Indwell Strather and Suites property today, and I look forward to the day when we can come together again to unveil Parkdale Landing, Indwell's next supportive housing initiative here in Hamilton. Just last week, the H&H B. Lynn Board of Directors approved more than half a million dollars in funding to create another 57 apartment-style suites for people in our community. It will enhance services and it will enhance lives, ensuring that we have access to the supports and services that we need to get and stay well. We know that having access to the right care and the right support results in better outcomes for people with mental health and addictions challenges. It's so important to have Indwell um, and other members of the healthcare community in our Lynn that actually really care and you can see that in their work and you can see the commitment that we have to people in our communities. Um, I commit to you on behalf of the board that we continue our work with all of our health system and care support providers to dramatically improve the patient experience for people living in Hamilton and other communities across the HNHB Lynn. Thank you very much. So none of this would be possible without wonderful staff and uh, I see a number of you here today who are part of the Strathern team and that will extend into our Parkdale Landing team and so I just want to say thank you to the staff, uh, Kim who's a program manager here and, uh, and others. Um, your work is truly incredible and uh, your care and compassion uh, for, for people that uh, uh, that you're working with is noticeable. Uh, we've seen the changes uh, as well over the last, uh, it's been almost almost two years since we, we started here at Strathairn. So, um, and I also wanna point out uh, uh, our board chair, um, Phil Tucson uh, is our board chair and he's here today. So thank you, Phil, for coming. And thank you to the tenants who are, are here today. I really appreciate uh, uh, you coming as well. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Indwell's Director of Mental Health Services, uh, Stephen Ruff, to share a few words. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you. Thank you, um, Minister Jasek, Ted, uh, thank you so much, um, and Janine, thank you for coming. Um, this is wonderful news, and today's announcement means that Parkdale Landing will become a place where lives will be transformed. A beautiful apartment dwelling for 57 households for whom independent living in a safe, affordable home was only a dream. This investment expands the reach and capacity of the Strather and Suites Supportive Housing Program and creates a new resource in an integrated mental health system. It extends the possibility of independent living to individuals profoundly affected by mental health challenges, addiction, and other disabilities, and for whom shelters, the street, or hospital were their only recourse. A home is more than a shelter. It grounds us, it refreshes us. At Indwell, we have the privilege of creating spaces that can be a home and then walking alongside the people as they make it their home. Strathairn Suites has demonstrated that when an affordable home is combined with immediate access to mental health and housing services, it supports our tenants in making remarkable achievements, finishing school, getting a first job, learning to cook, being in your own home for the first time ever, being healthy, finding a community, belonging. I want to thank our staff team again, um, who took the idea of Strather and Suites and turned it into reality. It's meeting the needs of people where they live. Your work is outstanding, and it is your achievements that have led to today's announcement about Parkdale Landing, so thank you again. I want to thank our partners at St. Joseph's Healthcare in Hamilton, and the Hamilton and Niagara Haldeman Brandt Local Health Integration Network. I said the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for, the <laughs> for their confidence in Indwell to bring uh, these essential community mental health services to our citizens at Strathern and now uh, at Parkdale. And we are pleased to be partners in transforming the mental health system in Ontario. I want to thank Minister Jasek for this um, crucial investment in community mental health and supportive housing. We welcome all investments uh, in affordable housing, in particular housing with supports for some of our most vulnerable citizens. Indwell's vision is hope and homes for all and the privilege of living out this vision uh, keeps us yearning to do even more. Indwell also recognizes the incredible support of our donors, our volunteers, our city partners, 
um, Hamlin Community Foundation again, contractors, our design team at Envisage, the, 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 the impact of beautiful spaces on, on, on the lives of, of, of people is, is so remarkable and so much part of health and it's a good social determinant of health. Um, public support leverages action, so again, thank you. Uh, finally, to our tenants. Uh, you have taught us so much about the possibility of community resilience and, and um, personal growth. And we look forward to meeting others and witnessing lives transformed at Parkdale Landing. Thank you so much. Um, one of the partners that I'm not sure if we've mentioned yet is uh, St. Joseph's Healthcare. Uh, so they are our key partner in both here at Strathern and uh, at the new Parkdale Landing. And so I know David Higgins who wanted to be here this morning, wasn't able to, uh, but would uh, love to be here. So uh, thanks to uh, St. Joseph's Healthcare for uh, working with us and uh, designing and uh, evaluating and all the various different pieces where they've come alongside uh, and worked with us. So we're really appreciative to them as well. This is, um, I was going to say this is this concludes, but it's really the beginning. Um, <laughs> it's the beginning of uh, an, a new uh, opportunity for 57 people with new homes. Um, however, this particular event and meeting, uh, we're going to draw to a close. And just I'd like to thank everybody for coming today. So thank you.